nice because we have a new student joining us today. And I know you all make him feel welcome. Say hello to... Ubisoft's X Defiant. Uh-oh! Why don't you take a seat and inhale his empty desk for now? Okay. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking about the new kid on the block, X Defiant. Ever since the dawn of time, FPS genre has dominated the gaming world. Titans of the first person shooter have set the standard for all the rest. Franchises like Doom, Half Life, Halo, Counter Strike, Call of Duty have always been staples of the entire gaming industry, and they've been kind of consistently putting out great content for a majority of their lifespans. As online became more intertwined in our experiences in gaming, they've had drastic impacts on the FPS genre as a whole, and we started to see it grow even larger than ever imagined. As some game franchises started to decay, others reign supreme. Most newcomers that entered into the space really start to decline pretty fast and never really have a chance to survive. It seems we have a new opponent entering into the square circle, Ubisoft's X Defiant is attempting to compete, but the question is, do they even have a chance? In this video, I'll discuss what they're doing right and wrong and make my own prediction on whether I think X Defiant can break through this iron curtain. Ever since July of 2021, upon the official announcement of X Defiant, FPS fans have really been interested to see whether or not they even have a chance to even compete against all the other titles in its own genre. I don't know about you, but I'm straight up tired of the current regime of these FPS titles, and I'm really looking for a change or a shakeup in the entire industry. And to be honest, I'm not the only one that feels this way. But the question is, why the hell are so many people ready for a new FPS title? Aren't they earning money? Isn't there released nearly every year of these massive franchises? To be honest, for the past few years, the FPS genre has been in a perpetual state of garbage in this entire era. I feel like some sort of disease or infection has been plaguing these developers that have caused all these new titles that are released to be utterly broken and just being constant crap this entire time. They've been unfinished they've been just pure greed and money grubbing. I don't know what it is. What is it? That stench. I've smelled it before. It's the smell of greed. And honestly, it smells like a weak old diaper. I can rattle off game by game and the flaws can be categorized by one or more of the following categories. Games being unfinished due to cutting corners with a lack of content at the very start. Chasing trends which causes a loss of identity that made the franchise unique. Money grubbing policies being unbearable either by creating a pay to win mentality or limiting content behind a paywall. Pure complacency where there's basically no reason to push the barrier beyond the norm and there's a real lack of doing so because there's not really an actual challenge. And we've seen this often happen between games like Battlefield 2042, Halo Infinite, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and Overwatch 2. And all these are just examples of how modern gaming in the FPS genre has really declined and it feels like we're just going backward. I mean, I'm not one of those people that has to say, oh, you know, back in my day, games were good. But if you really analyze it in the past decade, we've had utter crap in this genre. That is one big pile of shit. It's like almost like any game that came out a decade ago is 10 times more really flush with content and just better overall than anything we see today. Games like Battlefield 4, Halo Reach, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 all released roughly a decade ago and are really 10 times better than any game we've seen these past few years. Perfection. And recently, it just feels like every FPS title that has come out has fallen to this disease and it feels like there's no end of it. And us fans are just tired of seeing this constantly happen. I never once imagined the day where COD fans, content creators, or streamers would sit there and straight up tell people to take a break from COD, stop playing this game altogether, play other genres. I hate this place, this zoo this prison i mean trust me i'm all for gamers playing as many different genres as possible because that's the way i am as a person but when your job is literally to play this game on and the new installments when it comes out and you're telling people to like yo step away from this crap that that's honestly pretty bad and it's not just cod i've seen this in other fps titles that came out recently for community directors fans streamers they've all came out and said Go play something else. Get the hell out of here. And it's mainly because of the fact there's just not a clear level of polish happening with these game releases that's causing fans to want to step away or just see something new. So then all of a sudden when we get a taste of X Defiant, 
in April and June in their betas, we start to feel reinvigorated because we actually might get a new FPS title that doesn't just taste like crap. Now, with that being the case, we do need to analyze X Defiant and see whether or not they do things well enough that they could actually break through the norm. Because if you don't, then you will kind of fail right before you even get out the gate. X Defiant is considered to be a loadout based hero shooter that emphasizes your abilities to kind of help you in any sort of combat scenario that you are faced throughout your playthrough. On their own website, they consider themselves to be an arena shooter but let's be real, no they aren't. When I first played it, it seemed like they kind of get a similar vibe to games like Call of Duty and Overwatch in the basic play methods in which they have. And to be honest, I think they did a pretty damn good job. One of the coolest parts that the game has has to be that it's different factions. Each of them has their own different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, and they all cover the different parts of the games in which Ubisoft has released over the past few years. The Libertad acts as a sort of medic class that most of their abilities are tied to providing health or boosting resistance to damage by using drugs. Phantoms are the tanks of the group with some outrageous shields to protect members of the squad. Echelon are Black Ops groups going invis or being able to mark all different enemies. Cleaners are just high level damage output players that use fire as their main tool of destruction and dead sec or hackers that disrupt the other team's abilities. There's a lot of strategy that goes into which players you pick or which you don't, but the fact is you can go into this game in a social aspect and still have fun no matter what. That's really where the game really has its best moments. But overall, the gameplay of X Defiant is pretty rock solid. Now granted, there are some problems with the polish and I'll get into that a little bit later, but overall, this feels like a COD game very similar to COD Black Ops. I feel like the speed of it is pretty good compared to a lot of other recent titles that have been ultra fast to a whole nother level. It's like they're equating that if you can move really fast, that means you're having fun. Wrong! But that's not what an FPS game does in order to be fun. I don't want to enter into the ultra sweaty mode where I have to start sniffing Cheeto dust in order for me to really be successful at a game. I just want to have a game night with the boys and I'm not looking to have to bring a towel with me everywhere I go in order for me just to play a regular team deathmatch game mode. That's not the point of having that type of gameplay. You want to have something where there's ranked and there's social. And by having that dueling relationship, you can bring competitiveness to the game, but also have some social features that just make it feel fun. X Defiant kind of reminds me of those Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 back in the old days of speed, where yes, there are some quick moments that you can go into the game, but overall as a game itself, it was slower and it kind of rewards you for taking your time and being more precise with your shots rather than just diving, sliding all over the place. And the point is, back in the day, that's what most of these FPS games really prioritize. You never saw these pro players had such an influence on the older games as much as they do nowadays. And I do know that X Defiant takes a lot of its influence from the pro players having input on the origins of the game. But the fact is, you can understand that there are some social aspects that are really important for games to be fun and competitive ones to keep people coming back for more. And lastly, the map design, I felt like was pretty damn good for X Defiant. What is the biggest criteria for any any map design for FPS titles is the ability to maneuver and navigate without having to follow a green lane kind of design for all the players to go to. Acme was most famous in criticizing Call of Duty maps back in the day for really diving into the crappiness of its design based around that three lane concept. And then you can make that comparison to games nowadays like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 where everyone is funneled into the same damn lanes where no matter what, you're gonna get killed if you keep going in this one direction. And because of the maps are built so small, it means that you are really going to be right next to somebody else once you get respawned into the game, which is not really giving you enough chance to strategize or think of a different pathway to gain the victory. And then you have the opposite spectrum where maps are too massive, like in Battlefield 2042, where it causes the game to feel like a drag. And that is something that Battlefield to this day has a major problem with. X Defiant seems like they found a pretty good balance between having the variability of the different types of maps you'll see and different methods of getting to different points of the map so that it feels fresh, it feels different. It's a lot more social than what people are used to. And the fact that we're launching with 14 maps total at launch is a great sign for sure. And each of these maps are based on different parts of the games that Ubisoft has published and I think that brings a lot more kind of lore to this game as a whole. Now, don't get me wrong. X Defiant had a pretty good beta from April and June, 
but there was also a lot of crappy things I saw from it too. The lack of modes feels like a detriment overall. My initial gameplay definitely had me excited to jump back into X Defiant, but there's one thing I noticed right away that got me real nervous. The total number of five modes overall at launch, it gets me reminded to the levels of how bad Halo Infinite and Overwatch were when they first released. Like yeah, all around the game modes were fun, fun like, at their base functions and what they can do. Five? Only five? And it's not like these game modes are groundbreaking in what they're doing, because they're basically carbon copies of modes that we've seen from Call of Duty and Overwatch. You have Escort, which is the equivalent of any sort of payload delivery system that we saw from Overwatch. Zone Control, which is identical to Call of Duty's control from its ranked playlists. Domination, Occupy, Hotshot, they're all identical to the basic game modes we've seen in other games. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And it's just, it's just frustrating. Ah, but Mars Man, it's a free to play game. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So, so was Halo Infinite, but we're still gonna call that game a disgrace at launch. Battlebit had five modes too, but they're only made by four developers. Ubisoft is a massive publisher. Did we lose all of our sense of standards that we want for an FPS title? My biggest concern with this game is the fact that it will take time for it to finally get maps and modes to make it feel like a complete game. Yeah, for sure. The season passes will be great to see this game get more things to do, but the only concern is how long will it take for us to finally feel like this is a complete title? Because if they don't, they will fall as hard as a fat dude doing a stage dive. And I understand that this game is still in beta mode, but damn, there's so much things that need to be polished. It just feels like it's just off. I mean, honestly, when I was shooting people in this game, I felt like a lot of times the hit registration was completely off. And then at, uh, in other moments when certain guns were super OP, others felt like I was shooting peanuts at them. Like they were just useless. The M4 was actually considered a good gun done in a lot of other games, but it was utterly crap in this one. The M16 surprisingly became a dominant weapon if you use it the right way, and sometimes I'd pull the trigger and nothing would occur. And I think what hurts it more is the fact that customization is just super inconsistent. It doesn't give you a clear picture on how much these different attachments actually alter your gun's abilities or attributes. I feel like in Call of Duty, they at least they give you kind of a lot of different statistics and how much level does your gun get better when you add specific things. But in X Defiant, it was extremely difficult to know that any of these things actually changed it. So I'm gonna add a holographic sight, I'm gonna add a silencer, a fork grip, and I'll see some FMJ bullets, and uh, what does that really do? Uh, I don't know. I mean, let's be real. One of the key components or pillars of an FPS loadout shooter is to know how does different attachments alter your loadout. So by not having that really clear as day on your betas or at launch, this could be a major problem for X Defiant. Now, the ultimate question is whether or not X Defiant can compete against other FPS titles, as well as the big dog, Call of Duty. Remember those four pillars I mentioned at the beginning of the video on why these multiplayer games nowadays are failing? Well, in order for X Defiant to not fall on its face right at launch, they need to avoid as much as possible hitting any of those four pillars. There have been many other FPS IPs that have attempted to compete against others but they have fallen into these issues and it caused them to really decay or not really stand a chance. And by analyzing X Defiant and see where it lands in this criteria, the biggest thing that scares me is their lack of content. When you compare what they have offering at the start of their launch compared to games like Battlefield and Halo Infinite, you can see some very good similarities. The fear is if you don't have enough content at launch and you don't get that content to the players in a quick and fashion, it can get really bad really fast. But there have been games that started out with not a lot of content, but did a very good job at adding stuff in to bring fans to the genre or to that game. For example, Destiny 1 at launch was in a really tough spot where they didn't have a lot of content to do, but as time went on and their expansions start to happen, a lot of fans started to really funnel to the game, giving it more momentum heading into its sequel in Destiny 2. And if you find ways to screw it up like Halo Infinite did, then it's gonna be hard to get those players to trust you again when you finally add content. Even if Halo Infinite is fun to play now, the problem is that you'll never get to that same number of players that you had at the launch of the game when everyone was excited to jump into it. What gives X Defiant a fighting chance is their uniqueness in its gameplay and design. They have similarities to Call of Duty and Overwatch, but we have seen games that have done the same and be successful and also crap themselves. For example, games like Splitgate had a very similar gameplay mechanics as Halo Infinite did, to the point where people were calling it the Halo Killer. But failure was inevitable. Due to the fact that they did not pump out content and in quick and fashion, it caused them to decay and lose all interest altogether. They had the basic modes down and the gameplay was pretty fun, 
But other than that, they never really expanded upon what they were doing well. They never did anything to make themselves feel different. It's important to master what you do well, but also to expand on different aspects because you want to prove to everybody that you're not just a one trick pony. Splitgate felt really good in basic modes like Team Deathmatch, but as time went on, fans grew tired of the same old and just wanted more. If Splitgate expanded their game modes to be like Big Team Battle and include vehicles, then maybe you can see it get a push. So my advice for X Defiant is that even though you're really good at the 6v6 combat that you've created, it will become super similar to Call of Duty, so you need to create some sort of uniqueness to your gameplay so that people aren't just clinging you to that one title that you might be similar to and for the love of everything don't just chase trends just to chase them be unique in what you do and your fans will come and find you for example if you see games like battlebit who have have a pretty solid following on steam they do mirror a lot of mechanics like battlefield and call of duty in the way that it plays but the entire style of the game is completely different they give that massive war feel but it was in a cartoonish environment that it just feels like it's a fun experience. What made Overwatch so fun was that it was just different compared to everything we've seen so far being a hero shooter, but also having a lot of game modes that had social aspects and ranked ones that made it feel different than what the norm was. And it was so unique and fun that it won game of the year. And I think the biggest thing X-Define can do is to stay true to their identity. I think the fact that they're jumping into the hero shooter is definitely going to be unique, but for the love of God, stick to that style because you don't want to just shift your method because you, you don't want to just get pity buys. You want to get fans that will stay there for a longer period of time. And lastly, the fact that X Defiant is going to be a free to play game does get me nervous because I do know that there is going to be battle pass systems that are included in the game. The battle pass system is pretty common nowadays, but I do have a pretty stern warning for you, X Defiant. Do not fall into the ultra levels of Scrooge McDuck greed that we've seen every other game in the fps genre fall into with these battle passes do not lock away content behind a paywall that in order for you to succeed in the game or gain cool content you need to pay high prices to get there call of duty halo infinite overwatch 2 have all done this same process and it's caused their fans to turn away from them in a lot of aspects overwatch 2 essentially took their game and stamped on a battle pass system and they called it a damn sequel season passes can work in this day and age but you don't want to make it your most important feature your game should be able to reward players that stuck around and have been loyal to your game not just for who has the biggest wallet if x defiant can avoid being complacent with being a bare bones fps title and push the boundaries then they can compete in this day and age x defiant has the core functions of being a successful fps game as great gameplay a unique Unique style and it takes the best aspects of FPSs of today and brings them to one central platform. But if you fail to expand the content and stick to your true identity, then you'll fail just like every other FPS IP that has tried to enter into the arena. It's completely possible for X Defiant to compete in this era of FPS titles. Will it be the COD killer that people are calling it online? Probably not, but it could definitely land some body blows once it steps into the FPS arena. Thank you everyone for watching. Do you think the X Defiant stands a chance against these FPS juggernauts? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Band signing off. Peace out, guys. Guys.